members of the Tabernacle Baptist Church. We certainly miss our pastor. We're praying for him as he's away. We're looking forward to what God has for us tonight. Let's stand together and let's sing hymn number 628. Let's sing of our Savior's love as we sing my Savior's love. Lift your voices with me as we sing together. I stand amazed in the presence of back tonight and aren't you thankful for that wonderful and marvelous love of Jesus Amen. Amen. we're a loved people it's good to be loved by the Lord Jesus isn't it right. Amen. oh well we're grateful that you're here we're looking forward to tonight and we're thankful to have visitors with us on a Sunday evening and we have a way that we'd like to welcome you in just a few moments I do hope as Andrew mentioned that you'll be praying for pastor and his wife is there away and enjoying some time and some refreshing and the Lord knows that uh, that can be very profitable. Let's pray that way for our pastor. Of course, Andrew's going to be preaching tonight, so he has double duty, leading the music, singing, and then preaching. So you pray for him. The Lord would use him this evening. And then, of course, after the service, we'll have a business meeting and just wonderful reports that we'll get to hear. God is doing amazing things. Amen. And I'm grateful. I know you're grateful. Grateful for our pastor. And so let's pray together. Let's ask the Lord to meet with us. We know we need the Lord. Let's ask him to work in our hearts tonight, shall we? Father, we love you. We're so grateful for our privilege to be here, the privilege to know you, uh, and to understand to some degree the depth and the height and the breadth of your love for us. Thank you for loving us the way you do. Help us, Lord, to grow in our love for you and our understanding of your love for us. And as we live life from the day to day to certainly be witnesses and examples of your love through us to others, we pray, Father, that you would bless as we worship you. May we worship in spirit and in truth, <coughs> sing to you from our hearts, listen to the preaching, knowing that you want to speak to us. Amen. And I pray you'd help us and transform us, conform us more to the image of Christ as a result. May we be yielded to you. And may you bless all that is to happen this evening for your glory, for your honor. We pray you'd bless our pastor and their family while they're away. God, please refresh and strengthen and guide them this week. And we'll thank you for it in Christ's name. Amen. 
Andrew's coming back to lead us in another song since Jesus came into my heart. Amen. Hymn number 590 in your hymnals. Let's sing this wonderful song to the Lord now and let's enjoy singing it. Amen. Our ushers are making their way forward, and as Brian said, we have guests with us this evening. It's a pleasure to have you here, and we're honored that you're visiting with us. So as our ushers make their way back, if you'd lift your hand, please, and get their attention, and uh, take an information card, fill it out, a guest card, and uh, we're certainly grateful that you're here. You can put that in an offering place or pass in just a few moments, or in a box, or give it to any of the gentlemen. They'd be happy to take that. But thank you for being here with us. And if you need a bulletin, if you didn't receive one this morning or this evening, they have a bulletin. If you'd raise your hand and get their attention, they'll get one of those in your hand. Let's make note of a few things that are taking place in the next few days. On this Wednesday evening, there is no discipleship. There are no discipleship classes, and we're all meeting here together praying for Isaac. He'll be preaching on this Wednesday evening. The school's on spring break this week, so if you call the office, you're going to get Mr. Winstead at your own risk. So uh, uh, the office will be in, there will be people in and out of the offices all week, but uh, if you need something, you can get a hold of us uh, by our cell phones, and we'd certainly be ha happy to help you, but you may not be able to get somebody directly at the office. So pray for all the teachers and all that's going on and as the uh, students are out and away from us for a few days. Notice in your bulletin, please, coming up, there are many opportunities for our Greater Hickory Mission and outreach and lots going on. And, Lord's blessing our church. We're grateful for that. Hickory Soup Kitchen, you see the dates there and the donation items. Please note on Sunday the 28th, two weeks from today, a preschool parade. And uh, that's during the 11 o'clock service. All our young people 
young families and children three years and under and a chance, opportunity to recognize those and just be grateful for what the Lord's doing in our midst with our young people and you'll notice that we'll need to expand the nurseries soon <laughs> and uh, but we're looking we are as a matter of fact 11,000 square feet down the road but uh, we're looking forward to that and uh, make note of that on and uh, invite people to be with us. And then you see some other things in the school, but make special note of Sunday, May 5, our homecoming Sunday. We're well into our eighth decade, Tabernacle Baptist Church, and uh, looking forward to another great Sunday, May the 5th, and you see the special service times, Sunday school at 9.30, worship service at 10.30, and then a meal to follow, and we'll have a great time together. You see the baby shower for Emily Sigmund, and then the Young at Heart trip, that's this fall, but they'll need some information soon. So if you have some questions about that, you can talk to the Oak, to uh, Mr. Deland, Mrs. Deland, or talk to Brian. They can get you some information for that. Happy anniversary and happy birthday to a number of our people this week, and we're wishing you the very best. Today, Patricia Velasquez, happy birthday, and this, birth, this week birthday is for Chad Krause, Patty Schwartz, Parker Schatz, Casey Schmidt, happy birthday, Laurie Schoen, and Jessica Blanchard, and a happy anniversary this week to Dan and Kathy Newland and to Phil and Rocky Pringle. So I uh, wish happy birthday and happy anniversary to those folks. I know they, they'll appreciate it. All right, Andrew, come back and lead us in another song, Glory to His Name. Amen. Let's stand together once more and let's sing 586, Glory to His Name. Let's give Him glory now as we sing. Down at the cross where my Savior died Down where for cleansing from sin I cried There to my heart was the blood applied Glory to His name Glory to His name Glory to His name receive our offering and so if our ushers would come and uh, I'll share with you some prayer requests this evening and visitors if you have that card completed we'd ask you to drop it in the offering uh, as it comes by thank you so much for doing that for us let me share with you of course we continue to pray for Nicoletta Dumay and the home going of her mother as well as Chastity Fox uh, her grandmother Mary Siegel went home to be with the Lord and then we're also praying for Todd and Shelby and Morgan, Todd Summerow and Shelby and Morgan. Uh, Todd's father went home to be with the Lord, and that was mentioned this morning as well. 
And let's pray for these dear families. We're also praying for a five-year-old cousin of Wesley Sluter, Mabry Philyaw, and she is receiving cancer treatments. Uh, we're also praying for Wesley's uncle, James Sluter, who is hospitalized and, and uh, some complications with uh, pneumonia as a result of, of course, having a double lung transplant a few years back. And so praying for him. Also for Lynn Atkinson. This is Brittany Brown's um, mom, and blood clot and pneumonia in her lungs and a procedure tomorrow. So please be praying for Brittany's uh, mother. And then uh, we continue to remember Chuck Holliday. This is a friend of Becky Beatty. He's recovering from a very serious fall. God's done some amazing things. He's got a long road ahead of him, but he is at home, which is amazing. It's a miracle, and we're grateful to the Lord for that. Continue to pray for Brenda Powell. She deals with some severe pain issues. Uh, you remember this morning, Gracie Cook. We're praying for her, who's uh, been hospitalized and uh, is home now, but was hospitalized for a few days. So much to pray about, much to pray for. What a wonderful message this morning concerning our prayer lives. And that was, a, that was a great help. And so let's pray together for these requests and for our offering. And let's be faithful in our giving, obedient to the Lord. And we know that he'll bless it. Father, we love you. We're grateful for heaven. We're thankful for uh, the joy that we have uh, to be together tonight and to bring these names and these needs before you. And you care. Uh, with every intricate detail of them, and you know exactly what is needed. Would you please give comfort and grace uh, to the families who have lost their loved ones? We're grateful that they're in heaven with you. We're grateful that they knew you as Savior. We do pray that you would give comfort and grace to the families and that you would strengthen them. For those uh, who are sick or hospitalized and going, undergoing treatments um, or procedures in the coming days, would you please guide all of those doctors and uh, assistants and help them Lord to see what they need to see and we pray that you would give comfort uh, to those who are undergoing those procedures and healing and strength and the answers that they're looking for and that through it all uh, that they would be drawn closer to you and that you would be magnified and exalted please bless this offering I pray you use it to meet the needs and may lives be touched as a result in Jesus name amen Thank you. Andrew, Kaylee, and Monica are coming to sing, and so you pray for them as they sing a song entitled, When I Come to the Cross, and then right after they sing, Andrew will preach.
very Son of God took my place in agony. Now all I want to do is thank Him at the foot of Calvary. When I come to the cross, I'm amazed He set me free. When I think about what He endured to save a wretch like me, my heart is overwhelmed with what my redemption cost. I am humbled when I thankful for the cross of Calvary, and I'm thankful for what it means for us as believers. I want you to take your Bibles with me and turn with me tonight to Joshua. In Joshua chapter 22, I certainly am thankful for the opportunity to preach, and I'm looking forward to discovering what God has for us tonight. I'm thankful for how He's spoken to me concerning this subject, and it's just a privilege really any time to open up the Word of God together. And to be here at church, I'm thankful that you're here. And uh, let's pray together that God would speak to us tonight. Let's pray, would you? Father, thank you for today. Thank you for what we heard this morning from our pastor and how it encouraged my heart. I pray, Lord, that you would help me uh, to grow in my prayer life. I pray, God, that you'd help us collectively as a church, universally, Lord, to, to grow, uh, and not only in your grace, but as we come to you in prayer, Lord, to grow in our prayer life and what that means what it means to pray. Help us to realize the power of prayer. We're thankful for that. I pray, God, that you'd help me tonight as I deliver your word. I pray, Lord, that you would speak to us, and we know that you will, if our hearts will be receptive to it. I pray, God, that you'd use me. Speak to us, I pray, in Christ's name, amen. We find ourselves in Joshua chapter 22. You know, the book of Joshua, it, it's an incredible record, really, of the culmination of Israel's journey to the promised land. And as we approach chapter 22, we find that the promised land had been conquered 
And God had delivered all of the land now to Israel. Let's begin reading there in verse 1 of Joshua chapter 22. The Bible says, Then Joshua called the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh. Now, these two and a half tribes here had faithfully fought at the side of Joshua for more than seven years now. They had left their loved ones on the east side of Jordan to go fight the Canaanites. That's where we find ourselves here. And verse 2 says, And said unto them, Ye have kept all that Moses the servant of the Lord commanded you, and have obeyed my voice in all that I commanded you. Ye have not left your brethren these many days unto this day, but have kept the charge of the commandment of the Lord your God. And now the Lord your God hath given rest unto your brethren as he promised them. Therefore now return ye, and get ye unto your tents, and unto the land of your possession, which Moses the servant of the Lord gave you on the other side of Jordan." Our focus tonight here is found in verse 5. Would you read it with me? But take diligent heed to do the commandment and the law which Moses, the servant of the Lord, charged you to love the Lord your God and to walk in all his ways and to keep his commandments and to cleave unto him and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. Tonight I'd like to talk to you about the subject of your heart. You know, the human heart, it's an amazing creation of God. Uh, did you know that it beats an average of 70 t uh, times a minute, 40 million times a year, and 2.5 billion times by the time a person is 70 years old? Uh, with each beat, this fact is said that the average adult uh, heart pumps 4 ounces of blood. This amounts to 3,000 gallons a day and over 1 million gallons a year. This was very interesting to me. The heart produces enough energy in a 12-hour period to lift a 65-ton railroad car in the air. It's amazing how God's created us. It's amazing what our heart is capable of. The heart's an organ uh, that is absolutely necessary for life, and of course we know this. Many people die every year because of heart problems and a lack of heart health. Eldon Martin, in his book, The Steps of a Good Man, a book that I've been reading lately, states this, A healthy heart is vital for a full and enjoyable life. This is true physically, but it's also true spiritually. The spiritual heart affects the physical heart. The book of Proverbs tells us that a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. Allow me to pose this question to you tonight. How well are you taking care of your spiritual heart? How well are you taking care of your spiritual heart? The book of Proverbs also tells us to keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. That word keep means to guard. Are you guarding your heart with all diligence? Are you guarding what funnels through your mind on a daily basis? And I'd like for each and every one of us to think about this, to ponder the thought of this. I believe we all can agree that God is much more concerned about our spiritual hearts than he is our physical hearts. Our pastor reminds us often of this truth. He said it this morning, repeated it again, that though the outward man perisheth, the inward man is renewed day by day. It can be renewed day by day if we'll allow it to be. Have you ever wondered why David was called a man after God's own heart? We hear that. Uh, many of you, if you've grown up in church, you've heard it your entire life. David, a man after God's own heart. What a title. And in fact, he was the only man in the Bible that was given that title. What was special about David? What was special about David? The truth of the matter is that there was really nothing special about him. He was a human being just like you and me. Other than the fact that I believe that David sought after these qualities and principles we find here in the book of Joshua. And with the Lord's help, I'm going to give you five principles, five principles to consider if you desire a heart for God. Five principles to consider if you desire a heart for God. Look with me once more in verse 5. If you're in the habit of, of making marks in your Bible, I'd like for you to underline this verse and to go back uh, to it from time to time as God speaks to your heart. It says in verse 5, But take diligent heed to do the commandment and the law which Moses, the servant of the Lord, charged you to love the Lord your God and to walk in all his ways and to keep his commandments. 
and to cleave unto him and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. If we're going to have a heart for God, we need to take heed to these five principles that Joshua shared here in verse 5. Number one is to love the Lord. So profound, is it not? To love the Lord. This is a commitment of our affections. This is a commitment of our affections. Did you know that the Bible commands us over 250 times to love the Lord? To simply love the Lord as his children? In 1 John chapter 2 and verse 15, the Bible says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. The book of Colossians reminds us, Set your affections on things above, not on things of the earth. Your affections. Think about that word. Martin states in his book, What we focus upon is what we come to love. That is why many people struggle with wrong affections. Their focus is wrong. They're not focusing upon the Lord. Are you focusing upon the Lord daily? Daily. Are you focusing upon Him? There's so many things that we do daily for self-improvement, uh, for, for self-satisfaction, for self-enjoyment. But if we're all honest, we fail to take part in a daily dose of self-sanctification. Growing, growing in your spiritual self to grow closer to be more like Christ, to grow closer to Him. It would all do us uh, good, would it not, to get off social media. It'd do us a world of good from time to time to put the phone down, to put the iPad down, to put the computer away, to get off social media, right? Every one of us struggle with lies that we tell ourselves, discontentment in our hearts, trying to be someone or something that we're not. All because, really, our focus is on the wrong thing. It's on the wrong thing. And this is what I believe the Lord spoke to me about. I believe He's speaking to us about. How do we redirect our focus on God and His desire for our lives? We saturate ourselves in the revelation of who He is. We saturate ourselves daily in the revelation of who He is, the Word of God. We wholeheartedly seek after him and his desire for us. The Bible tells us in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11 through 13, one of my favorite passages in all of Scripture. It says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And ye shall seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. And here's the most beautiful part about it all. Verse 14 says, And I will be found of you, saith the Lord. That's a promise he's given us. This is a promise that the Lord gave through his servant Jeremiah to the people of Israel while they were in captivity under the reign of King Nebuchadnezzar. And I believe that this is a promise for his people today. It's a promise for you. It's a promise for me. When we seek him with all of our heart, we'll find him. There's a song that our young people had the opportunity to compete with in fine arts. And the title of the song is, If You Search With All Your Heart. When you seek me, you shall find me. When you search with all your heart. I think it's important for these young people. I think it's important for all of us. But certainly for these young people, these teenagers, to know that if you search for God, you'll find him. He's promised us that. Isn't that so comforting to your heart? Husbands and wives, is there anything, let me ask you this question, is there anything that you wouldn't do for your spouse? Fathers and mothers, is there anything that you wouldn't do for your children? We would do anything for them, would we not? Why? Because we love them with all of our hearts. Those that profess to love the Lord with all their hearts will seek Him with all their hearts, and the greatest part is that you'll find him. You'll know him, and you'll become more like him. As the song says, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim. 
Martin says in his book, as you focus upon Jesus, your love for him grows and your understanding of his love increases. The result is that you will grow and develop a deeper heart for God. Isn't that what it's all about? So if we're going to have a heart for God, if we desire a heart for God, the first step we ought to take is to love him with all our hearts, to seek after him. Number two is to walk in all his ways. And it's right here in the text. Joshua uh, lays it all out for us in order to walk in all his ways. You see, this is a commitment of direction. This is a commitment of direction. The book of Proverbs says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. So many times in life we make decisions without consulting the Lord or seeking his will. Every step of your life, choose to walk in the same direction as the Lord. The Bible says in Genesis 5 that Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah. And just in case Moses wasn't clear, he states it again a couple verses later. He says, and Enoch walked with God and was not, for God took him. You want to know what was special about Enoch? Enoch lived a life that demonstrated the faith that was in his heart. And that's what was special about Enoch. Enoch lived a life that demonstrated the faith that was in his heart. Out of his faith came obedience. Out of his faith came submission. Out of his faith came fellowship with the Lord Jesus. Hebrews 11.5 says, By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him for before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God. Would it be said of our lives that we pleased God? That we pleased the Lord Jesus Christ, the Savior of our hearts? Would it be said that we pleased him? It's an amazing testimony. It literally says, and he had this testimony that he pleased God. His focus was upon the Lord Jesus Christ. He walked in the same direction as the Lord. He obeyed him. He was submissive to him. And because of that came fellowship with the Lord. You know, we we make the will of God for our lives so difficult, don't we? I say that because I'm the most guilty. If we will purpose to walk in the ways of God, we will, find that the, we will find the will of God. How do we find the will of God for our life? That's the million-dollar question, right? How do we find it? Man, we struggle with that, don't we? Every, I feel like every step of life, I, I, I say that for myself, and I, I think I could speak for the majority. It's almost like every step of our life we struggle with that. Lord, am I doing what you want me to do? Am I where you want me to be? Lord, help me find your will for my life. How do we find the will of God for our life? Day by day, we get into the word of God and we stay in fellowship with him. You say, it's that simple? It's that simple. Day by day. Give us this day our daily bread, as pastor preached this morning. Give us this day. Day by day, we stay in fellowship with God. And as a result of that, we'll walk in his direction. Hand in hand, we'll walk with the Lord Jesus Christ, and he'll never lead you astray. Psalm 119 says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. If you are seeking after the Savior, he's promised that he'll never leave you, and he'll never forsake you. He is our constant companion. What does the Lord say to Joshua when he's handing him the baton here at the, uh, the first chapter of the book of Joshua? It says, As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. And I love this. He says, I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. That's a promise. That's a promise that the Lord gives us. There's a song we sing in our school. And I have the privilege, I've had the privilege uh, to teach for the last month and a half or so, uh, you know, these younger classes. And it's a joy. It's a blessing to see them singing. And I'm telling you, some of them, I mean, they're just belting it out. They're singing. They've got all the expressions on their face. And, man, it's just such a joy to see them singing out for the Lord. And there's a song that we sing, and Lord willing, I'd like to teach it to the church. Um, it, it's, it's, it says this, I have a friend, a faithful friend, and Jesus is his name. He will not leave. He stands by me. 
My shepherd, he remains. They're getting that truth in their heart. This is a truth. This is a promise from God that we have God as a friend. He's a faithful friend. He'll never leave us. My shepherd, he remains. I love that, those lyrics. My shepherd, he remains. No matter what comes up in your life, turn your eyes on him. Determine to walk with him in the same direction, and he'll never lead you astray. What an encouraging thought. Number three, if we're going to have a heart for God, we need to keep his commandments. We need to keep his commandments. This is a step of submission. This is a step of submission. I've learned that the greatest struggle that we face as human beings does not come from the world or from Satan's attacks. I say, really? Our greatest struggle doesn't come from the world or from Satan's attacks. Our greatest struggle in life comes from us, our flesh, the inner man. Our greatest struggle is our own flesh. Am I going to do things my way or am I going to do things God's way? That's the question you have to ask yourself on a daily basis because it's a daily decision. God created you with your own volition, the ability to choose. Every day you wake up, you have to choose to obey what you know is right or to disobey him and to do what your flesh wants you to do. And again, this is a truth for every one of us. The thing that I love about this passage is that it is a universal truth for every believer. No matter what stage of life you're in, no matter what age you are, no matter what Sunday school class you may be in, right? This is a universal truth for every one of us. We have the choice every day. You know what I, I love that the Bible says? His mercies are new every morning. I need his mercies every morning. We all do, if we're honest. Aren't you thankful that he extends those mercies to us every day? Praise the Lord for that. Praise the Lord. The Apostle Paul reminds us of this struggle with the inner man, the flesh. When he says in the book of Romans, he says, For the good that I would, I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. So what's the answer? Paul gives us the answer in verse 25, just a few verses later. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Every day we must make the choice to die to self and to obey God. The only way that that can happen, though, is through the power of God that's in you. You can't do it yourself. You've tried, right? You failed. I've tried. I failed. The only way to overcome our flesh is through the power of Jesus Christ that worketh in us. It's through the Word of God. It's through us getting on our knees humbly in prayer and asking for God's strength in our life, for asking for God's help. And when we seek Him, we'll find Him. He's faithful to us, and He'll extend us that strength. He'll give that to us. He'll empower us to live a Holy Spirit-filled life. He will. Every day, we have to make the choice to die to self. We can implement that power in our lives by staying as close to the Lord as possible, staying in the Word of God, staying in prayer, and from a genuine heart of faith, asking God to help you. Number four tonight, cleave unto Him. If we're going to have a, a desire to have a heart for God, we must cleave unto him, cleave unto the Lord. This is the fourth step that Joshua gives the tribes. Now, this is a step of dependence. This is a step of dependence. How many of you have ever been on a roller coaster? Been on a roller coaster? All right, let me ask you another follow-up question. How many of you liked being on a roller coaster? All right, how many of you disliked it? I'm just curious. Okay, yeah. Mr. Deland, Really? I would have thought that you had a, a yearly pass to Carowinds. I mean, really? I didn't, I didn't realize that. I love roller coasters. All right? I love roller coasters. You know, Bennett, he looks just like his mama, but he acts just like me. All right? I, pray for him, please. One of those, one of those perks is, man, he, he loves anything that gets his adrenaline going, right? And, you know, I loved roller coasters growing up. We, we went to Carowinds a lot. You know, we, we've been to Disney World and all kinds of places. And, man, we've, we've ridden these roller coasters. We've had a blast doing them, right? When I was probably about 14 or 15 years old, you know, Carowinds, I grew up um, in, uh, around the Charlotte area, Monroe, just the outskirts of Charlotte there. And uh, so I went to Carowinds a lot. And uh, right before we went, there was a, a young girl, 13, 14 years old, maybe on the news. And the... the I can't remember what the, you know, the little subtitle was there or the caption, 
but I, I just remember that they had Carowinds, one of the roller coasters in the background. So, uh, you know, for a brief moment, because I never like watching the news, but for a brief moment, I just stopped. I paused for a second, my busy day, and, uh, you know, it was on a TV. I'm sure my dad was watching it or something, and I began to watch it. And they interviewed this girl. This girl was, I can't remember what roller coaster it was on either, forgive me, but she was on a roller coaster, and her seatbelt came loose. Not only did her seatbelt come loose, but the thing that, you know, that clicks and comes down on her, the guard, whatever it is that she hangs on to, came loose as well. All right, so she has no protection. I, do, I did remember that this roller coaster did go upside down. Right? So you're dealing with this, and you're thinking, I mean, put yourself in that position, how scary that would have been. She was truly hanging on for dear life. And the person beside her, whether it was her father or her brother or somebody, you know, they were, I was holding on to her for dear life as well. And they asked her, what was going through your mind in that moment? And she said, I thought I was going to die. I mean, I can imagine you probably would have thought the same thought. And she said, what did you do? She said, I just held on for dear life. I mean, she was cleaving onto that roller coaster, right? Just in hopes that she didn't fall out. With that same thought, I believe that that's what the Lord is asking us to do, to cleave to him for dear life, to cleave to him. Another use of this word cleave is the verb glue. God wants us to stick to him like glue, to hang on to him for dear life. The problem is that we, speaking to myself really, we become so independent, don't we? So independent in this life. The devil makes us believe that we can walk through this life without anyone's help, without the Lord's help. And all the while, the reality is that we are in desperate need for God's help. I'm starting to find that out the older that I get and the more you realize the truth of that. Are you cleaving to God? Learn to live totally dependent upon God and throughout each day express your great need for him. That's what God wants you to do as a believer. Because that's the reality, right? We're not promised tomorrow. Life is but a vapor. I was telling the young people a couple weeks ago, right? The Bible says it's appointed unto men once to die. That's you. That's me. This life, though it may seem in the early stages like forever, you blink and it passes. Never forget my papa telling, telling my dad one day, he said, Tim, he said, you're 40 years old today. He said, you blinked and you were 40, weren't you? And he said, I was. He says, you're going to blink and you're going to be 50. You're going to blink and you're going to be 60. He said, that's how quickly life passes. And many of you have experienced that and you know the truth of that. Enjoy it while it lasts. But the reality is that it's not going to be here forever. Are we living this short life that we have dependent of ourselves? It, 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 ask yourself that question. Is that what you're doing? Or have you come to the conclusion, maybe through difficult circumstances in your life, Whatever it may be, have you come to the conclusion that the only way to walk this life is completely dependent upon the Savior? In the Christian life, prayer is the greatest expression of dependence upon God. You know, our pastor this morning spoke on prayer and how we ought to pray, right? What the Bible commands us to pray, right? Right? The greatest expression of dependence upon God, I believe, in the Christian life is prayer. Why do you think that even the world begins to pray in moments of life or death? You realize that? Somebody who denounces the Lord Jesus Christ, who wants nothing to do with it. I, I've, I've, seen, I've seen, you know, interviews and, 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 you know, highlights of certain things where atheists, in a moment of desperation, a life or death moment, we'll begin to pray. Pray to what? Pray to who? But pray. Now, why are they praying? It's simple. Because in that moment, they realize that they've exhausted everything that they can do to positively influence that situation or circumstance in their life. Maybe it's a loved one that's on their deathbed. Or maybe it's something that you've discovered in, in and of yourself. 
Right? Maybe it's, it, it, you, you find yourself in, 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 a, in a car wreck or you have, or know someone that is in a car wreck right, or something like that and you realize in a moment's notice, hey, this is life or death and there's absolutely nothing that I can do to positively influence this situation and turn it around. So what do you do? We pray. We pray. In that moment, we express our dependence upon God. Lord, I need you. Lord, I have to have you. God, please help me. I'm learning as a father right now to pray completely dependent on him that he would save my children. And that's a prayer that their mother and I pray. I confess to you it's not on a daily basis and, and, and I need to do a better job of it. But the Lord knows I have prayed in desperation. God, there is nothing that I can do in and of myself outside of just raise them up in the fear and the admonition of the Lord and teach them your truth. Right? We're riding down the road and little Anna Kate starts singing the B-I-B-L-E. That's wonderful, right? That's wonderful. She's, re- she's learning about the Bible. And there's no better way to learn these things than to put them in song. And it's just precious for me to hear her little voice singing songs like that. And to hear some of these kids singing songs like that, I have a friend, a faithful friend, and Jesus is his name. There's going to come a point in their life where they may not have any friends, where the world may forsake them, right? And they're going to come to a point in their life where they say, what friends do I have? I have a friend, a faithful friend, and Jesus is his name. Oh, he stands by me. My shepherd, he remains. He'll not leave us. He'll never forsake us. Cleave unto him. Learn this truth now. Young people, learn this truth now. You're going to have to implement that very soon in your life if you haven't already. Cleave unto him. Number five, and lastly tonight, serve him. Serve him. Joshua says to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. Many of you can say, man, Josh is pretty dramatic with that statement. Serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. Eldon Martin says in his book, serving God is not a position we feel, but it's a priority we follow. It's not a position we feel. It's a priority we follow. Right? If I'm standing up here employed by Tabernacle Baptist Church, leading the music or teaching in the school or coaching or doing whatever I have a hand in, and I simply view it as a position, I am not doing what God has called me to do as a believer. Because it is not a position that we feel. It's a priority that we follow. So often when we find ourselves having no time to serve God, because simply put, it's not a priority in our lives. As the hymn writer penned these words, By and by when I look on his face, I wish I had given him more. Allow me to ask you this question. Are you looking for opportunities to serve the Lord? Are you looking for opportunities to serve the Lord? Here's the reality is that while there's a breath, there's hope. While there's breath, there's life. While there's breath, there's an opportunity to serve him now. And again, we're not promised tomorrow. Get engaged in the Lord's work now, today, and enjoy every moment of it. Men, are you leading the way in your home by exemplifying a heart of service to the Lord? I believe that God has called us to lead the home, of course. God, God has called us to lead our wives. God has called us to lead our children. Are you leading and exemplifying a heart of service? Hey, We don't have to serve the Lord, right? We get to serve the Lord. That ought to be the culture. That ought to be the culture of your home, right? Hey, growing up, my dad never looked at service in the work of God as a drudgery. He never did. I never, ever heard my dad say in the 18 years that I lived there in his home, I never heard him say, boys, I'll be home in a minute. I got to go to visitation today. I, I, I got to do this. All right, I got, I got to go visit this person. Hey, listen, hey, we'll have some fun tonight. We'll go get some ice cream after church. But first, I, I got to preach. I have to. I got to preach. All right, I got to sing. Well, my mom never looked at it. Not that I can remember. I'm sure there were days where they maybe thought it. I'm sure there were days they struggled with their flesh. I'm sure they did because they're human just like you and me. May it be said in our homes, fathers, lead the way, that we set an example, a culture 
of enjoying serving God. Hey, we get to do this. Joshua commands these tribes here as they're dispersing back to their home to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. More importantly than pursuing a heart for, to serve for service, are we actively pursuing the heart of God? And that's really the thrust of the message tonight. If we daily pursue the heart of God, we'll have no problem finding ways to serve in the work of God. Martin says this, he says, If we will be men, if we will be men fit for the master's use, we must first be men after the master's heart. You want to serve God? Pursue the master's heart. Seek after the Savior. Seek to know him more. Get into the word of God every day. Lead your home in the word of God. And we will be fit for the master's use. May we sing that beautiful hymn with conviction, All to Jesus I Surrender. All to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his presence. Daily live. Daily live. To have a genuine heart for God, we must love him. Walk in all of his ways. Keep his commandments. Cleave unto him and serve him. Five principles tonight to consider if you desire a heart for God. I hope you'll thank and pray over these things. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for the opportunity it is to serve you. What a blessing it is. Lord, you know in my heart that there's nowhere else I would be than right here, right now, tonight, serving you. God, you're a faithful God, and we're thankful for that. You're faithful to me. You've never failed me. I pray, God, uh, that you would help me to live in the reality of this to live in the truth of this, and as a result, Lord, to seek after you, to love you, to walk in all your ways, to keep your commandments, Lord, to cleave unto you, and to serve you with all my heart and with all my soul. Help us as a church to do this, these five things and to pursue your heart. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let's stand together. And as God has spoken to your heart, he's covered a lot of ground tonight through the message. There's areas of our lives where we know that God has touched. He's put his finger on some things. And may God help us to surrender to him. I've learned, and I'm learning, that if, if I love the Lord, there's a progression. I'm going to walk in his ways. If I walk in his ways, I'm going to keep his commandments. And if I'm going to keep his commandments, I'm going to cleave unto him for that dependence. And as I cleave to him, I'm going to serve him. How many of you know God spoken to your heart tonight? Would you lift your hand? And let's do business with the Lord. I want to encourage you. He mentioned David, a man after God's own heart. Here's the display of his heart before the Lord as he prayed. And maybe you could come and repeat this prayer to the Lord tonight. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Try me. Have you ever asked God to try you, to test you? Try me and know my thoughts. See if there be any wicked way within me. And lead me way everlasting. That encompasses the, the prayer of the man after God's own heart, the man who had a heart for God. Let's bow our heads. If you need an altar as we sing in just a moment, why don't you come do business with the Lord. Pray that prayer. Mention it to Him. Search me, God. Show me my heart. Our Father, I pray that you'd use the message tonight, that you would work in us and through us to search for you with all of our heart. Bless this invitation, I pray in Jesus' name. As we sing together, will you surrender to him tonight?
our surrender is progressive, the one area that God's speaking to your life about, that's the one area He wants you to surrender. And our lives are constant surrender to Him. And all He wants you to surrender is that thing that He's speaking to you about. That's your all tonight. As we continue to sing, may God have His way. message tonight very helpful challenging that's the daily desire we should have and may God help us to chase it chase the Lord appreciate your faithfulness tonight and and just a little bit right at just a few minutes we're going to have our uh, business meeting and so please if you're a member of Tabernacle Baptist Church we'd love for you to stick around there's wonderful things to report I believe the young people will be across the way and uh, we'll get to hear some wonderful uh, news and some updates. Is there a video tonight as well? No, no video this evening. Um, so we're looking forward to that. So it is 6.03. Let's plan uh, to be back in here in three minutes. 6.06. Ushers, if you wouldn't mind to help pass out the, uh, the information as well, and we'll get that to everyone. Three minutes. We'll come back. You're dismissed.